G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're talking about golfer's elbow. And I think there's one aspect in particular about golfer's elbow, which we're finding clinically, that isn't often talked about. And I think it's a bit of a shame because it's potentially one of the most important aspects to consider when you're trying to solve your golfer's elbow. So if you're trying to treat the symptoms, we also want to make sure that you're treating the underlying cause. And hopefully by the end of this video, not only will you have a really good understanding about what that potential underlying root cause of your golfer's elbow is, but you'll have a, a really impressive, really simple and effective exercise to address that root cause, to hopefully help all the other stuff that you're doing for your golfer's elbow get better. So if you're doing some mobility work, some strength work, all this sort of stuff, um, this will hopefully complement that really well. And it will hopefully, as I said, get to the underlying dysfunction that potentially sets that sort of inner elbow up for, for failure when it does. So, so I think before we get into that, let us know in the comments below. Tell us about your golfer's elbow. How long have you had it for? You know, what have you done that's worked really well? What have you tried that you're not happy with? Just give us a general sense of how you're going because we want to use that information to help you sort of figure out a pathway through. Um, I'll make sure that I respond to all comments. So if you can let us know down below, that'd be fantastic. And if you do go on to enjoy the video, please leave a like below and consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps this channel grow. It helps support us. But I guess the ideas behind these videos are really designed to help as many people as possible. Um, hopefully figure out that missing piece that maybe they're not getting from somewhere else. Um, that final piece of the puzzle that they've been searching for. And we can only get this out to more people depending on you know, how much interaction you guys give. So if you could consider leaving a like and subscribing, that would obviously be very helpful. So, um, so to get into it. The important thing, and it can sometimes sound a bit controversial when I say this, but I think in terms of golfer's elbow and something sim along the similar lines like a tennis elbow, we tend to be very focused on the elbow itself. We know that that gets a bit irritated, possibly inflamed. The muscles as they attach into the bony prominence there uh, become dysfunctional. You get this pain, potential some swelling, all this dysfunction there that creates an issue for you guys, potentially stops you from playing golf or doing other things that you enjoy doing throughout your life. And in the industry and in the broader public, we're well within our rights just to focus in that area because that's what hurts. And often we get this sense that we didn't have dysfunction until we got dysfunction because it doesn't hurt until it hurts. But one of the things that we're finding and one of the things I want to open you guys up to a little bit more is that golfer's elbow, much like tennis elbow, is very heavily linked to neck and upper back dysfunction. And again, that may sound a little controversial to some, it may sound a bit strange to others, but... I think the main reason why that does is a lot of people don't have pain or overt obvious pain in their neck and upper back. So if we start dropping the hint to say, well, look, maybe your neck and back is the root underlying cause that sets your elbow up for failure. If you don't have those overt symptoms, it can be very hard to reconcile that idea and make sense of that idea if you can't connect the dots easily. But using a ball, I want to show you guys how you can test for this, but also treat it at the same time, and hopefully see some improvement um, to some degree, depending on how irritated and sore this is, immediately after doing it. Now, the connection that I'm talking about here, it lies in the nerves that come from your neck and upper back. Now, a lot of people who are familiar with golfer's elbow may also be familiar with what's called the ulna nerve. And it's a nerve that originates from the base of your neck, essentially comes out through your armpit and goes down through the inside of your arm, so the inside of your elbow, and goes down and supplies a lot of the hand and particularly the, the little fingers stereotypically the, the poster child for ulnar nerve dysfunction. Uh, it's also the funny bone. So if you hit the inside of your elbow and you feel that tingling that goes down in your finger, it feels shocking and really crappy, that's the ulnar nerve. And what we're finding and what's potentially really exciting from a physical therapy perspective, but hopefully from your perspective as well, is that if there's some stiffness and some tightness in the joints and the soft tissue around those areas, essentially it can act like a bit of a kink in the hose and pull some slack out of that nerve and sort of almost bound up that tissue. And you can have this indirect flow on of dysfunction anywhere along the course of that nerve. So traditionally we see the inside of the, the elbow, the area that becomes dysfunctional because it's often subjected to a lot of force. If you are hitting a golf ball, Perhaps you take too much grass, you get a bit of a shockwave through there. If you're hitting hundreds of balls a day, in isolation should be fine. Your body should always adapt positively to that if your mechanics are good enough. So if you have some baseline dysfunction where there's already some low-grade uh, tension or some extra dysfunction in that system, 
then you can start to expose areas because they're being loaded differently to what they're designed for. And we see that happen with the ulnar nerve on the inside of that elbow and causing golfer's elbow. So the point I want to make with this video is to say that we still need to make sure that you're doing your best, or giving your best efforts to treat the symptoms of golfer's elbow, whether that's improving the soft tissue mobility through your forearms, even the muscles in the tricep and the inside of that arm as they attach into the elbow, if you can feed a whole bunch of slack into that elbow, then you can start to take some of the pressure off the irritation and help it settle down faster. There's obviously a bunch of strength related exercises with your wrist and forearm and elbow. Um, there's rotator cuff exercises, all these exercises that can help increase the amount of buffer that you can have there. But ultimately, if we're not having a conversation about the hidden stiffness and tightness in your neck and upper back, then we're potentially missing the bigger picture. And there's tons of people, a high percentage of people who can to recover really well from their golfer's elbow, depending on how severe it is, without ever really considering what's going on at their neck. But for a lot of people, you have to get to this sort of handbrake, this hidden handbrake to normal function, in order to allow this to get better and get better quickly and not come back again. So we want to sort of show you guys how to do that. So as I said, if you can grab a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball, golf ball is probably a little bit too small and a bit too hard, but if you game, you're welcome to do that. So as I said before, we can use this as a diagnostic tool and in the same conversation, use it as a treatment to change what you find in real time and then hopefully see an improvement down the track. And clinically, what I like to do is as soon as someone comes in with a golfer's elbow issue and I start talking about the neck, you can tell that it's, a, as I said before, it can be a very challenging thing to connect the dots with, particularly if you haven't been sort of shown this sort of information before. So what I often do is I'll get someone to do a specific test. So if they have some elbow soreness in the inside, you know, whether that's grip strength, whether that's um, testing or resisting that ulnar deviation, that sort of the, the little finger towards your wrist, uh, even doing some resisted sort of bicep curls, doing a movement that gives them a sensation that they've been having. It reproduces their pain because by then, Putting that aside and saying, look, how does that feel? Get a sense of how strong you feel, how sore it feels. Then we move on from that and treat the neck. So free up the joints of the neck, the joints of the upper back, the, the soft tissue around those areas as well. And then immediately retest that. And we, most of the time, if not all the time, we'll see an immediate difference in some factor associated with their pain. Either their strength's immediately better, their pain's decreased. Sometimes their pain's gone, depending on the mechanisms that are causing their pain. But the point I wanted to make here is I'll get you to find something that you know shows you your pain and discomfort, do this exercise and then do it again. And don't take my word for any of this. Make sure that you're seeing a change if you're finding and changing the stiffness and tightness here. You deserve to see progress. If not, come back to this video, let me know in the comments, tell me and hopefully we can direct you a little bit more specifically as to where you need to be and what your situation might be and how that might be different to someone else's even though I'm fairly confident there's gonna be something up here that you can work on regardless. So, so with that being said, we wanna talk about what that exercise is. So all we wanna do with the ball is we wanna place the ball into the base of your neck. So how that looks is we wanna find the bump at the base of your neck. We're gonna place the ball just there, maybe up a little bit. And then depending on the side that you're having troubles with, so I'll do this side. So we wanna roll the ball off to that side just so it's onto sort of a bony shelf. And then, Ideally, we'll get you to lie down on the ground, but so you guys can see, I'll get you to do this sort of sitting up against the wall. So all we want to get you to do is I've placed the ball in the middle of my neck. I'm just going to roll it off to the side. So for me, I know this area is a little bit stiff. So it's not as simple as just shifting your body across. You sort of have to shift it across and rotate yourself a little bit just to allow that pressure on your neck. Otherwise, the ball can slip out really easily. And you might need to take your bottom back from the wall a little bit so that you're angling back onto it. But again, you're basing this on how you feel. Um, so all we're looking for here is we're looking for some stiff areas and some tight areas. You may not find anything that feels tender and sore. Even if you do, we want to care more about the stiff, tight areas than the painful areas because it may not be on the same side. So if you have golfer's elbow on your right side, this is my right side, and you put the ball and roll it to the right hand side, you don't find anything, but then you compare it to the other side and all of a sudden the other side feels horribly stiff and tight. This is the side that you need to be working on, even though you feel like your symptoms are on the other side. The reason being is your body doesn't care as much about left and rights as we do. 
you have some mechanical dysfunction on one side, it's, it definitely affects that side, but if it doesn't cause dysfunction, it can pull slack basically from anywhere else around that. And then that can then go on to cause dysfunction. So in order to, to talk about the very root cause of your dysfunction, we want to go hunting for where the deep stiffness and tightness is. Once you've found a spot that feels stiff, so for me, I've got a spot here, all you want to do is stay here. So feel free to put some old um, videos of your golf swing up to analyze while you're doing this. Watch some TV, read a book, jump on your phone, do whatever you can. But just stay here for a minute or two minutes until you feel like this tissue starts to give a little bit. Then once you're confident it has, then just move the ball up a little bit or down a little bit and around and just go looking for the next area. So your job within this is to scour from sort of the mid neck down to sort of mid shoulder blade level, this section of your spine at the back and some of the ribs at the top here, looking for any stiffness and tightness that could be pulling some slack out of the system, compromising the normal function of your nerves, particularly the ulnar nerve as it passes through that area and transfers that dysfunction, gives you a vulnerable spot that can be exposed by doing something like a golf swing and hitting golf balls, which is why we call it golfer's elbow. So, so I guess the moral of today's video is make sure that you give yourself a test and a retest. So give yourself a movement or an activity that you know lets you see how your pain feels. Spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, however long you need to find this stiffness and get rid of it. It's generally on the same side. It doesn't switch as you go up and down. Um, spend enough time to free up those areas so you feel like things are a bit looser up there and then retest those same movements again to gauge whether you've done something. Come back and let us know in the comments so we can have a conversation about what that means. So, so I think it's really important when we're talking about golfer's elbow that we definitely respect your symptoms, that we still treat the local dysfunction that you have. But as I said a few times now, if we're not having a, a broader conversation, a deeper conversation even about why those symptoms are there and how the neck and the spine may contribute to those symptoms, then we're potentially missing the point entirely. We're not solving anything. We're potentially just wallpapering over the cracks. We can't promise that it's going to go away. And if you are someone who plays golf and has golfer's elbow, performance is everything for you guys. Um, you know, even if you're one or two strokes worse than you were the day before or the round before, that's a big deal to a lot of people. So if you have all this hidden dysfunction that you're carrying into your golf swing every single time, every single shot you play, it doesn't matter you know, how good or bad you're playing, if you can take some of those handbrakes off, not only will you start to see you're more likely, there's more likely to be a resolution in any dysfunction that you have, but you're also going to see improved physical performance because you're taking away these handbrakes that your body's compensating around every time you swing a golf club. So hopefully that's useful information. Again, let me know below if it is. Um, and again, if you enjoyed it, if you find it useful, hopefully inspiring to some degree, please leave a like below and consider subscribing just to help us out, like I said before. So uh, so as always, um, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was something new and different to what you've heard before. Um, but you know, we'll see you in the next video and hopefully we can keep that going.